One of the reasons why I wanted to go into neurosurgery and particularly functional neurosurgery is all the uh, research and technology that is coming out uh, in the field. It's really, I think, going to revolutionize uh, treatment of brain disorders over the next 10, 20 years. Uh, and there are already many companies out there who are working on new therapies that uh, will take time to develop, but, um, but the number of companies uh, working on these things are far more than has ever existed in the past. And, uh, are going to create therapies that have in the past we've had no treatments for or, or certainly no surgical treatments. So, um, so it's really exciting. It's a really exciting field to be in uh, at this time. So epilepsy is one of the most common neurologic disorders. Um, I think it affects up to 1% of the general population. And uh, a lot of those patients, up to 20 to 40%, uh, remain uncontrolled, meaning they continue to have seizures despite being on medication. And those are the patients who really could potentially benefit from surgery. I think in the past that p patients, um, and even time, oftentimes referring physicians, were afraid of surgery because it's invasive, it has risk, um, there's sort of a bad reputation uh, sometimes in the community uh, regarding brain surgery. But I think what patients need to understand is nowadays m many of the surgeries for epilepsy are minimally invasive. Um, they're very well tolerated. They have very low complication rates. And, uh, and there's many new therapies now for epilepsy such that almost all patients who are uncontrolled on medications, uh, adult patients, uh, are often candidates for some kind of uh, um, surgical therapy, um, whether that is some kind of neurostimulator or a resection or a minimally invasive laser ablation, which is commonly done now for epilepsy. Um, it, it all kind of depends on the type of epilepsy that the patient has. And, uh, and there's a big you know, uh, workup process involved in that. Uh, so um, that's why I always encourage uh, patients and physicians to uh, come early, refer early, um, to get started in that process. And I think that it's oftentimes a question of what are the patient's goals uh, and what are their fears. Uh, I think that if they are truly afraid of brain surgery, um, then you know there are, there are options that don't involve that, like vagal nerve stimulators. But if their goal is really to be seizure free, then uh, I think that considering uh, a brain operation, uh, a minimally invasive brain operation, is something that uh, it should be seriously uh, looked into. So there are three types of neurostimulators for epilepsy. Uh, the vagus nerve stimulator, which uh, involves a surgery to place the uh, a electrode on the vagus nerve in the neck. Uh, and then the RNS system, or neuropace device, which involves placing electrodes in the brain, which uh, can detect seizures and then deliver stimulation in response to it. And um, long-term studies have really shown that um, in greater than 70% of patients get uh, a lot of benefit from that device. And uh, it's also uh, nice in that it can treat types of epilepsies that otherwise uh, prior had no surgical options. And then most recently, uh, the deep brain stimulator um, has been FDA approved for the treatment of epilepsy, which is similar to that of uh, what's used for movement disorders. It's just in a slightly different place in the brain. 